We could not write a National Register nomination for a big house period site because it was not considered Chaco. So anything Basque Maker is not Chaco, anything P1 is not Chaco, anything after uh, 1100 is not Chaco, and especially not the quote uh, 13th century stuff, not Chaco. Well, <laughs> here we have physical links. I mean, here we've got it all together. And, and it, all, it all hangs together. Uh, God, where am I going with this? So anyway, now that Mesa Verde's burned, we can look at Farview House and we can see that the quote ditch that we've all been struggling with all these years is actually a road that goes from a Chaco period site or a post Chaco period site into a big house period site, which would be Spruce Tree House and Cliff Palace. Um, I think this is all about power objects, but uh, God, I'm not, no, I'm not, anyway, I don't know what to do about the symmetry stuff. I don't know what started that. Beer, beer started that. So when you're, when you're working, when you're working in architecture, and this is, we gotta say, you know, all of this work was done before, I mean, when I left the architecture school, the computers were coming in, literally. They were coming in the door and they were boxed in the hall. And up to that point, uh, all of our design work had been done on the table. And it had been done with what we call bum wad, <laughs> or trace. <laughs> and uh, with trace, I mean, you could do process. I mean, you could layer stuff up, you know, and you could see what you, what you did before. I mean, it's a great classic example of it in this foundation. You know, if these guys had trace, that's how they would have figured it out. So that's your process the design process. We went from mapping sites using paces and compasses and chains, which is a really crude way to do things, to using an Alidaid and a, you know, a basic plane table and a chain and a, a, a stadia, which is also a pretty crude way of doing things. But it allows you to look at the building as you recreate it. And so if you're drawing along, if we're drawing along here and, and uh, all of a sudden I get something in this wall that doesn't seem to fit, you fall back and look at it. And, and you make marginal notes. You know, this is this, this is that, this is this, this is that. And so when I take those, those original drawings down and to assemble them in a, the next layer, um, I got to see, I got to pull things together, you know? And, uh, and then I did the, it, that was the days when all this pulling together was done, you would have to integrate published stuff. And to do that, we used the Xerox machine. And so, you, you know, I had a little proportional wheel and I could say, you know, I have this little Kiva here in this, this publication, and, I'm, and I need it to be this big <laughs> to match my drawing. And, you know, so I do my little proportional wheel and go down to the, to the Xerox place and uh, blow it up, you know. Oh, it needs to be 190%, you know. And so I blow it up and then integrate it that you, so you'd assemble these things. And then sometimes you're dealing with big pieces. And so at Aztec, for example, uh, the stuff we did at Aztec was really interesting because I ended up got, getting to superimpose Bonito, Salmon, and Aztec. And it, while doing Aztec, so I had two separate, again, these sites have never been mapped together. So I had all these maps that were separate and I had to figure out how to pull them together. So I pulled, uh, so I had, uh, Aztec West taped up and Aztec East taped up and all the, uh, I had managed to recreate the uh, tri-walls. And while I was sitting there looking at that going, oh, I wonder what about this? You know, this is the beauty of trace. I had a trace layer over all that. And I just lay, laid a ruler down it, folded it over. And hey, what do you guess? You know, we had symmetry, big symmetry. And, uh, you know, symmetry, that, symmetry implies movement. 
And because we have chronological difference between those two big buildings, and we have that same, they were changing the vocabularies. It was still the same building, but it was fraculated. It was pulled out and, you know, it was, it was all right there, but there was clearly intentional change in the vocabularies. But of course, you know, I have nothing to compare that with because Aztec East is the only first order great house that we have. Uh, first order uh, 14th century, uh, 13th century great house. So that's how I started playing with the symmetries and that's how we got onto the spiral in Bonito as uh, the Xerox machine. I had Bonito laid out and I looked at it and I said, boy, this looks suspicious. So I measured out a golden spiral and uh, took it down to the Xerox place, blew it up to match my Bonito, slipped it under there, and there it was in the for what it's worth department. I mean, I have, I have no idea whether that, you know, Taft Black Horse would say, yeah, totally intentional because it curls right into the vortex at Bonito. Um, but I, it's beyond my imagination. Um, so now we're getting to symmetry and proportion. <laughs>